You are listening to a broadcast of the First Congregational United Church of Christ Phoenix. raising 
nearly $80,000 to feed other hungry children. And, oh, by the way, school lunches at Martha's school got distinctly better and more nutritious. <laughs> now, we're seeing this kind of thing more and more often, aren't we? People of all ages are standing for social justice in a very personal way, using the tools that they have at hand. Remember what happened in the Philippines in the late 1990s, those of you that weren't born then? You probably don't. At the time, some 80% of the population of the Philippines had cell phones. And the islands became known as the text messaging capital of the world. Using this humble but powerful tool, a group launched a messaging campaign about political corruption. Next, a presidential impeachment trial began. Then hundreds of thousands of texting people took to the streets of Manila for a popular uprising that forced President Joseph Estrada from office. And remember how Mothers of Dump Drunk Driving started 25 years ago? It was just one mother who had lost her daughter to a drunk driver. In her grief, she brought together a handful of determined mothers to join the fight against driving under the influence. Their small effort turned into a nationwide program to save lives. Since the year 2007 in Arizona alone, due to Mothers Against Drug, Drunk Driving work to influence legislation and publicity, drunk driving deaths have decreased in Arizona by 52%. Now, in the letter to the Ephesians that, that Jan read today, we are urged to put on spiritual armor to fight for social justice. The Apostle Paul says, Our struggle is not against the enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness. And Paul knows that is not an easy assignment. More than anyone, Paul knows how hard it is to be a good and loving Christian. He's been robbed, falsely accused, rejected, abandoned, beaten, deserted, imprisoned many times, and shipwrecked. As he writes this letter, he is facing a cruel and certain martyrdom at the hands of of the Romans. My friends, things haven't changed much. Even today, as Paul says, you have to withstand the flaming arrows in order to proclaim the gospel of justice. Nine-year-old Martha in Scotland had to face her own flaming arrows by being sent to the school principal. Mothers Against Drunk Driving had to face down the politicians who knew the statistics but did not act. And powerful, a powerful industry that put profit <coughs> over safety. And moreover, they had to challenge a society that viewed drinking and driving as acceptable. And yet, both Martha and the mother seemed to understand but the founder of the Children's Defense Fund, Marion Wright Edelman, meant when she said, if you don't like the way the world is, you change it. You have an obligation to change it. You just do one step at a time. And perhaps Marion Wright Edelman knows, as we here at First Church knows, if you're going to follow Jesus, you had better good, look good on the wood, because that's where you'll end up. <laughs> and more importantly, as scholar Terry Eggleton notes, if you follow Jesus and don't end up dead, it appears you have some explaining to do. 
Being a Christian carries a responsibility, a commandment to action, to love, and to be firmly and personally committed to the well-being of others, often at the expense of ourselves. Now today we heard a reading from the Old Testament in which Joshua is addressing his people. This is a time when the Israelites have finally arrived at the Promised Land and defeated the Canaanites who were living there. Joshua is working to broker a relationship between all the tribes of Israel and to live together under Yahweh, the one true God. And as usual, this is not just a dusty Bible story about political and military struggles in ancient times. No. This is a story about us here today. Joshua is speaking about our congregational life together. He is calling for a recommitment to God through worship. He is also asking us to reaffirm our identity as people of God in service to others and to justice. Joshua asks us to turn from other gods, to be responsive to God above all earthly powers. He's asking us to rise up from our own comforts and self-interest and to remember that no matter what others may say, we are people of God, people of truth, people of justice. Presbyterian theologian Charles E. Rennell writes that Joshua is calling for us to forsake the false gods and insecurities of our common life, such as the love of American materialism, the fear of terrorists, and trust in military force. Reynal asks us to choose instead other ways of building up marginalized and oppressed people. Joshua says to his people, choose this day whom you will serve. Ah, that's the hard part, isn't it? Choose not only what God you will serve, but what you will do once you have chosen. Now Jesus has added the greatest commandment is to love others, love God, and to love ourselves. But it's hard to love others if you can't love yourself. Amen. Choose yourself in a way that will make it possible for you to love yourself. What choices are making are you making that keep you from being able to love yourself? And in making those choices, who are you serving? In loving yourself and others, you are loving God. You're serving God when you serve others. And as nine-year-old Martha and so many others have showed us, it is possible, as the Apostle Paul writes, to stand for others against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the cosmic powers of this present darkness. Use the tools you have, no matter how small. Remember the Velvet Revolution in 1989 in Czechoslovakia, where the people put an end to communist rule by ringing their house keys. Imagine 380,000 people in the streets when one person takes out his keys and begins ringing them. And then one by one, by one, everyone begins ringing his keys. And the numbers grow until a million people joined in the great ringing. The practice had a double meaning. It symbolized not only unlocking the doors, 
but it was the demonstrator's way of telling the communists, goodbye, it's time to go home. <laughs> no one of us is too small to take action. No one of us is too small to pray for justice, to vote, to sign a petition, to march or stand in protest, or speak out for just causes. No one of us is too small to be informed about what's going on in our world, our nation, or our state. No one of us is too small to participate in a social revolution on behalf of people who cannot stand or speak for themselves. As Mary Wright Idleman has famously said, you just need to be a flea for justice. Enough committed fleas fighting strategically can make even the biggest dog uncomfortable and transform even the biggest nation. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Now will you rise if you're comfortable and join in in the great song of justice, God of grace and God of glory. <laughs> 